first floor bedroom. What do you think? Main floor master bedroom is is I think it's important. I think that the next house that, that we move or build to build um, will have a, a main floor master. Hmm. All of those um, most of the baby boomers yeah. that are looking to downsize, maybe they've got a large two story. Uh, all the bedrooms are upstairs. They want to move that master. Uh, that main floor to the main floor, and then maybe have so it's a Rambler style. Yeah. Although we've seen two stories with uh, with an owner suite on the main, which I think is a great option as well. But that is number seven on the list, uh, first floor master bedroom. What do you guys think about that? Is that uh, is that mainly because then you can get everything on one level, or is that so you can get away from your kids who are going to be uh-huh. on top? I think it's a combination of both. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a combination. Yeah. That's of my both. that's my thought, right? Because we yeah. looked at. That main floor master, the problem is with young kids, a lot of the mm-hmm. time, you're not going to get another bedroom on that main floor. So you're going to be separate from right. your kids. Yeah. Right? In some cir- circumstances of life, great. It's actually awesome. Right. right? Yeah. But if you got a young baby. Agree. You know, you, a, a lot of the time your option then is to take that front office and convert that into the bedroom, but you're right at the front of the house. Yeah. So something yeah. to consider. Yeah. I think it's a great point. Um, you know, for us, our youngest is five. We could definitely do... Uh, a main floor bedroom and then all the other bedrooms up now, but definitely not when they were babies. Yeah. I mean, uh, open plan living. Uh, so the um, we had open floor plans for you know, 10, 15 years where they were wide open. You know, you'd have your kitchen, your dining, and then your great room, and they were kind of stacked right next to each other. Um, the open floor plan is still more desired, but having some different designs where maybe that dining room is set off uh, to the you know to the kitchen, but yet it, it it's all still open. There there's a little bit of separation, um, kind of like your your floor plan, Mike. You've yep. got your kitchen, which is you know overlooks the great room, and then the dining room is off to the to the right, and that seems to work really well. Um, and, and it's what people are really looking for. They still don't like the the chopped up rooms where everything is is um, has walls and everything is is um, chopped up. So uh, the open plan living is still popular. Spotlight on <laughs> ceilings. Okay, so this talks about some different ceiling designs. We've seen um, in the last 20 years a lot of tray vaults mm. in the master bedrooms. You'll see some race car designs with uh, sheetrock. Um, you know, in the last five years, five, ten years, we've seen the, the beams that are in the great room and you've seen them in the kitchen. So the ceiling designs or spotlight on the ceiling is one of the, um, is one of the hot spots for uh, 2022. What do you think about that? Do you like ceiling stuff, ceiling designs, coffered ceiling? I, I think so. Yeah. I think you take an average house and do something on the ceiling. Makes and a big it difference. Completely. Yes. Makes it feel completely different. Like this is a higher end home. Agree. And all you've done is stuff to the ceiling. Right. Yes. Yeah. We yep. did one thing that we did that was pretty simple for our foyer is we built um, a box that goes up about nine inches and then put the light fixture in the center of the box and then did uh, crown molding. And so it's a pretty cost effective way to create some dimension on mm-hmm. the ceiling. And then we painted the you know the color of that different, and it I mean it looks really yeah. cool. You're also seeing a lot of beams too. Yes. I, I mean that's a pretty common thing today. Um, we had that optionality when we were looking at building, and the the thing to take into consideration with the beam, if you have a traditional ceiling height, makes it feel a little bit small. Mm-hmm. And when you're sitting oh, in that yeah. living room there, it kind of pushes down a little bit, but it's definitely a nice accent. It ties yeah. nice into a mantle or some other you know wood accent. Yeah, it does. Home. Yeah, it works great. With I think beams are cool. Yeah, but, but you got to have high ceilings. You it do. doesn't work even on. I mean, I, I think you got to have at least 10 foot ceilings probably but really 11 foot ceilings with the beams because the beams will bring it down you know almost a foot six eight in- yeah, yeah at least so eight inches smaller um but not tiny it says um we i would say 15 20 years ago there was this concept of buyers wanted as much square feet as, as they could get give me the biggest house um most of the time is just a box um, with a whole bunch of square feet. Uh, that's that's not the case anymore. Folks are looking for less square feet, but more um, more amenities, more technology, um, better use of space, and, um, and and that's what today's buyer, they're looking for more quality, less square footage. Mull electric homes. Hmm. Hmm. I haven't heard of these. More, <clears throat> excuse me, more homeowners understand the importance of um, electric, Electric homes, um, wow, they're talking about all electric homes. So incorporating, uh, you've got your solar technology um, in this. So they're, they're talking about all electric, including the, the HVAC system. Uh, the way to achieve it is you're doing geothermal, heating and cooling, mm-hmm. and then you've got the, the electrical 
um, your electric system to, to increase that, that air temperature. So when you do geothermal heating and cooling, the air in the ground, and I'm not sure how deep they got to go, six feet maybe? Six feet down, it's the big. air in the ground. I think they well, go. the temperature, the, the, so, the heat <laughs> in the ground, heat in the ground. <laughs> so, so the temperature of the air in the ground when you when you cut the tunnels, they're either vertical or, or horizontal, is fifty four degrees. And so, in the summer, uh, it's really easy to cool your home. You're just running a fan and circulating that fifty four degree um, air. In the winter, now you're only bringing it uh, it up, you know, ten or fourteen degrees. Um, so, geothermal heating and cooling. My folks did that. Their heating and electrical, so cooling bill, year-round average is about 26 bucks a month. Yeah, geothermal is amazing. It's incredible. So, so the technology basically is exactly the same as how an air conditioner works, where you're compressing mm. a compressible liquid and then pumping that in and letting the temperature change, and it's literally the exact same process, just reversed. So... What you do is instead of using an air-to-air heat exchanger, yeah, I know, this is all getting technical. Air-to-air heat exchanger is like a radiator in a car, right? That's how your air conditioner normally yeah. works. A geothermal system, instead you put the radiator underground. Yeah, six to ten feet past the frost line. So that way you can run the system in reverse and heat the home the same way. Yeah, that's And yeah, even though it's only 50-ish degrees in the ground, you can they blow out you know eighty five degree air yeah yeah wow. pretty cool it's amazing super cool and they're super efficient yes it's, it's way way more efficient than a gas furnace um, we'll run some numbers on on the time to recap that cost because they do cost more um, yeah. to install but um, we'll find out what the time frame on, on I think that that's is. the biggest that's yep. the biggest hurdle is, is that yeah. cost yeah the other hurdle too is is that like if you're gonna finance that mm-hmm. you know how many comparable homes uh, are going to have geothermal that an appraiser can say, hey, okay, this home is worth X yep. with standard HVAC, and this home with geothermal is worth X. Because you just don't see that many homes with geothermal, so you, there's no comparison there to mm-hmm. make to say, okay, this elicits this much higher of a price if you have geothermal. So that's the tough part is the, the cost up front. It's yeah. going to be the tough part it. with any of these green technologies, too. Where it's like finding comps that have the same amount of solar panels and that kind of stuff. Yeah, is, right. That's where you get into untreaded waters. Yeah, it, it's it's. I think when you're talking about solar or geothermal, it's got to be a long play. I mean, yeah. you got to stay in your house probably seven plus years um, to recapture the the cost to, to install. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I think it's cool. Yeah. Like Thy family breakout spaces. Uh, the pan- pandemic uh, taught developers and managers of multifamily buildings to the importance of flexible shared spaces for socializing and work uh, term breakout rooms for some. Uh, also, you know, a lot of the um, distance learning or at home uh, learning that's been going on as well.